hello 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 guys this is Shar. welcome back to my channel i would like to thank you guys for coming back and checking me out hanging out with me listening to me it's greatly appreciated i know i um every time i do a video i always always forget to say please like comment and subscribe and please do that if you so choose it is greatly appreciated um, I, w I have been meaning to do a video um, on just a, like a recap of my last video, um, which I talked about the Housewives of Potomac. I mentioned that um, Monique Samuels left, like she just quit. And then I also mentioned that Robin Dixon uh, was fired. Um, long story short, it turns out that she wasn't fired or either if she was, she worked it out and now she will be returning for season six. I believe it's season six for Housewives of Potomac. So as I mentioned in my last video, she better bring it and you know, she can't just be Giselle's sidekick or hype girl. Like she really needs to bring it, um, or she's just going to be like extremely boring but you know so i have been um preparing to do that video but when i caught wind of this which is what you're looking at here um it just it threw me it threw me completely off and um as you can read this is trump's last minute pardons and um, i just came across this on the internet is you know if you google it it'll come right up um probably several versions of it um, I wasn't looking for anything particular, but I was just surfing the web and I came across this. Um, this kind of, I don't know, it just kind of blew my mind. But uh, this list is kind of long. Um, I went through it. It looks like it may be um, roughly about 30 some odd names on here, give or take. You know, may even be 40. The list is kind of long. Um so I wanted to come on today and talk about it um, briefly. I pray to God this video don't doesn't go into about 40, God forbid, 48 minutes or something like that. Because I know you guys don't want to hear me talk that long, nor do I want to talk that long. But this was really, really a trip. And I'm interested in hearing um, just feedback from you guys about what you think. Um, so I'm kind of doing something a little different today. You're seeing my iPad here, my iPad Pro. And I came across this list because I wanted you guys to see as well um, for those who haven't checked this out as of yet. But uh, as you can see, this is Trump's full list of his last minute pardons or commuted sentences, a.k.a. the people he let go. OK, the people he let free out of jail. OK, Um he does this every president does it um sometimes it's televised or you know they talk about it especially if it's someone of um you know famous or you know someone that's really popular or controversial they'll talk about it a lot who he's partnering or you know what i mean but most times you you don't even really hear about the pardons that much because it's people that we don't even know you know what i mean so this, this is um, the 2021, 20, I'm sorry, 2020. This happened like, this was signed off last year in 2020, okay? So this is the list. And like I said, I was just surfing the web for stuff. I went through this list because I came across it. And we all know that uh, Little Wayne is on this list. He pardoned Little Wayne, which brings me to... Um, now it makes sense as to why Lil Wayne uh, spoke on behalf of Trump, right? Because we were all trying to figure out why the hell um, did Lil Wayne go and, you know, speak on behalf of Trump as if he was trying to get black people or like this urban black crowd or group to vote for Trump. And everybody was just taken aback by that, including myself. But as you can see, this is his name, Dwayne Michael Carter Jr. It says, um, 
Carter, a rapper who performs as Little Wayne, was granted a pardon. He pleaded guilty in December to a felony weapons charge after he carried a handgun from California to Florida on his private jet. Due to past felony convictions, he was barred under federal law for possessing possessing firearms. The charge carries a maximum prison sentence of 10 years. Carter has frequently expressed support for Trump and recently met the president on crime or criminal justice issues. Um, so yeah, there you go. You see it right there in ink. He was let go. Now, we all know that um, Lil Wayne didn't do any time because he, he had just went like in December, right before Christmas, I believe, like maybe at the beginning of December. And what he talked, he spoke um, on behalf of Trump, like what, December, I mean, uh, November sometime like that. So yeah, now it makes sense. Uh, obviously his people had already orchestrated a deal for him. Like if we, you know, get him to speak on Trump's behalf, will you, pardon him and you know obviously trump signed on the dotted line and there you go he's he's a free man now so um i was actually getting ready to close this out you know after i read this about Dwayne um carter aka little wayne i was getting ready to close it out but yet you know my finger kept sliding through sliding through sliding through and i caught also here this is the infamous kwame kilpatrick he is or was actually the um one of the infamous mayors of detroit michigan he was actually pardoned now um i don't know if anyone knows that story out of michigan he was like notorious for um, bribery, taking bribes, and taking um, city workers' pensions and using it for, like, personal use. Using all these city workers' money for his personal use to furnish his lavish lifestyle, allegedly. And I don't know how much of it's true or how much it, of it is fake, but he was convicted of those charges and he had a 28 year prison sentence that he had to do mind you i don't know about um public public officials from the past or anything like that but that sentence did seem a little harsh because we all know that politicians are dishonest they lie they steal they take bribes all that stuff and you know to my knowledge i haven't heard of a prison sentence that long for a politician of the same type of um alleged crimes but yep he he was pardoned as well it says kwame kilpatrick former mayor of detroit had a 28 year sentence commuted he pleaded guilty to obstruction of justice and resigned from office as part of the plea deal in 2008 following a pay-to-play scheme in which Kilpatrick and his father took kickbacks and bribes to steer city business to certain contractors. Initially, he served 99 days in prison, but then served an additional year for violating his probation and was released in 2011. However, he, he, he was in there for... Um, he ended up going back after 2011 and and just recently got released so you know kudos to him i know he's happy you know his family is happy anybody that was in jail that is now not in jail i'm quite sure is ecstatic and um just like with little wayne after this i was kind of going to close it out because you know i'm not really interested in this i'm not really interested in who Trump pardoned. Um, I've never really had any interest in any pardons that any presidents have made. Because like I said, usually it's people that we don't even know of. You know what I mean? But um, so yeah, I was just scrolling through even still. And then I came across this name. 
And as you can see, that says Desiree Perez. Now, for those who don't know, because technically this name and, and she is not a household name, but, you know, because I just know stupid stuff for no reason. <laughs> um, and then, you know, it's been talked about a little bit um, publicly and on social media. Desiree Perez is currently the CEO of Rock Nation, which is the um, company that rapper Jay-Z founded. Um, so if you, anybody who follows Jay-Z, I'm quite sure this is pretty much common knowledge, um, to them, but you know, it's a lot of people that don't really follow Jay-Z like that. So they probably don't know. So this is for the guys that don't know, but, um, yeah, I, like I said, I was going to pretty much cut it out, cut it off and go to something else after the Kwame Kilpatrick name and after Lil Wayne, but yet my fingers kept strolling and... I came across Desiree Perez. Now, for her, it says um, Perez was arrested in 1994 for possession of or possession for drug possession. I'm sorry. She was arrested in, arrested in 1994 for drug possession and in 1998 for grand larceny and possession of a firearm. And then he goes on to say in 2019, she was named CEO of Rock Nation, the entertainment company founded by rapper Jay-Z or rapper turned mogul Jay-Z. Now, you know, when you just read that, it's like, oh, okay, well, she was parting. Cool. I know she's happy. She's home. She's home with her family. Yeah, okay, but the strange thing about this is that Desiree Perez has been home for years. <laughs> she's been home for years and years. Like, she's been home for almost a decade, 20 years or so, give or take. Um, as this stated, she was arrested the last time in 1998 for grand larceny in possession of a firearm. And sometime thereafter, I don't know if it was sometime in 98 or in 99 or in 2000, but definitely between those three years, she was released. And she has been out ever since then. And as it states here in 2019, um, you know, she lucked up and got appointed to be CEO of Rock Nation. Now, the crazy thing is, is that, well, one, the crazy thing is that she's been pardoned when she was already out of jail. How is that even possible? You know, to be pardoned is to be let free from jail. So if she wasn't in jail, how the hell could she be pardoned? Can somebody please tell me that? I'm a little bit confused. How can you be pardoned if you were not currently in jail? And she was obviously, she either did her time, okay? Because once you do your time, it's done. They don't have, they can't arrest you or, or, or bring you back for any more of those charges that you did your time for, regardless if you filed, you know, if you plead guilty to them or not. But if you were convicted of it and actually got jail time and did the jail time, whatever that amount was, and then let go, then that's it. It's over. You're done with that. As they say, you've paid your debt to society. So how could she be getting pardoned? What is she getting pardoned from? You know, once you do your time, that's it. I mean, this is baffling to me. Like, what? She was out. She's she's a working woman. She's the CEO of a multi-million dollar company, if not billion dollar. I, I don't know how much Rock Nation is grossing, but I know they got the music industry. I know they got the um, sports management you know, and probably other things going on. So I know they're raking in the dough. So, and she's running it. She's the CEO, chief executive officer. So 
you know, she's working and been working. So what is she being commuted for? What is she being let go from? She's out. She's been out. So that was strange. And it's still strange until someone enlightens me and tells me something different. That's strange to me. Right? So um, after that, I just started going around on the internet more, a little bit more. And I also, but I didn't, I didn't bring that up on the internet. I'm sorry, guys. So I can't show you that. But um, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but Kim Kardashian, we all know that she is studying to be an attorney in the state of California. You can actually study under um, licensed attorneys, attorneys that already have law degrees. Um, and you can um, study with them and under them and prepare for the bar. Um, and yeah, you can do that in the state of California. It's almost like an apprenticeship a little bit. You know, you kind of study under them. They quiz you. And, you know, when they see fit, they deem you ready. You can prepare to take the state, not the state board, but the bar, the bar exam. So that is what Kim Kardashian West is doing. That's what she's been doing. Um, you know, I don't know how ready she feels um, in terms of taking the bar, but... You know that's what she's doing and in light of that she's also very instrumental in prison reform and getting a lot of people out of jail that's just gotten grossly sentenced um, on certain offenses um, especially if it was first-time offenses or offenses that were not um, really uh, you know not really well, they're criminal offenses, but they weren't really harsh. You know what I mean? Like the lady that she got out, that the one that really became publicized, which was Alice, I think her name was. I'm not sure what her last name was, but um, I know her first name was Alice. I want to say Cooper, but it may not be Cooper. But uh, yeah, she was instrumental in getting Alice out. Trump approved it. Alice had an offense of a small amount of drugs i'm not sure if it was marijuana or another type of controlled substance but it was a small amount and it was her first offense and she got sentenced to life in prison years ago years and years and years ago and it was in the south so um and alice has been home now for a couple of few years now maybe five years more give or take but, um, yeah, so Kim is instrumental at this point um, with assisting with getting um, certain people commuted. And um, I know a while back she sat down with uh, the rapper, uh, what's his name, the one that was arrested. And because he thought he was going to get quite a bit of time. He was arrested for, I'm not sure what he was arrested for, but I know he was driving a motorcycle and... The judge let him lock them up and wouldn't let him out. Um, Meek Mill. She had a conversation or a meeting with Meek Mill about prison reform because he he ended up getting out. He beat his case, and she met with Meek Mill. Now, that was a few years ago, a year or two ago. Now. Um, Cause now I guess because of that issue, you know, where he was looking at a lot of time for a, a a crime that wasn't really serious. So because of that, he's really big on prison reform as well. So, Card him and Kim Kardashian met, and you know, obviously, I guess they were talking about different concerns and different issues as it relates to prison reform. And um, this is what I'm thinking. Um, because, you know, uh, Meek Mill is really active in Rock Nation as well. He's signed under Rock Nation. And I hear that he and Jay-Z are really tight now. And he's, you know, at Rock Nation a lot. Um, just like being really instrumental in a lot of different things that they got, that they got going on there. And like I said, he's really instrumental in prison retreat form as well and you know jay tries to dibble and dabble in, in um, extracurricular activities as well such as prison reform and a lot of other um 
issues as it relates to minorities and how they're being disenfranchised on a lot of different levels. So um, I'm hearing that Meek Mill is really active up there at Rock Nation, right? So I'm thinking, now this is just my thought. I'm thinking that that long time ago, a couple of few years ago, when Kim Kardashian sat up there and met with Meek Mill, I think this lady was present. This lady right here, Desiree Perez. I believe she was present. I, I believe she came to the meeting and I believe she sat down with Kim Kardashian and Meek Mill to discuss well, Meek Mill might have really came to discuss prison reform, but I believe she came and also wanted to, to discuss, um, you know, her trying to get out of some type of trouble, legal trouble, that she was currently in, right? Because obviously, if she's on this list, she was in some type of legal trouble. She was in some type of legal trouble. And, you know, it may have been all preliminary in terms of maybe she has some type of legal trouble. And because she has money, she's the CEO of Rock Nation. I'm quite sure she's, you know, bringing down a large salary being the CEO of that company. So maybe she was working with her attorneys and, you know, to keep pushing off some type of case that was either brought against her or brewing against her, right? So I feel like she was working, or not working, but she spoke with Kim Kardashian in you know, basically asking for assistance from her to get her commuted, AKA pardoned, right? We all know that's what Kim does. Kim, you know, she has a caseload of these things where people is writing her left and right, telling her about their case and wanting her to look into their cases with her and her legal team that she works with to see if they can get pardoned. So I believe that this lady came to her personally with Meek Mill for that meeting, asking her for her assistance to get her pardoned for whatever legal drama or legal trouble that she was currently in at that time. Now, mind you, like I said, they, she met with Meek Mill a few years ago. I'm not sure exactly what year, but this is just 2020. I don't know. That might have been sometime in 2018. I don't think it was before 2018. It may have. I mean, if someone knows, please comment below. But, you know, it couldn't be no more than three, two to three years. Maybe three and a half years ago, possibly. But no more than that, I don't think. But either way... Don't you guys agree that this lady must have been in some type of legal trouble that was get, that was brewing and it was going to come to pass that she was going to be found guilty of it? It's got to be because I'm no attorney. I, I don't know anything about law in that way, so I'm not trying to act like I know what I know. But the thing is, I know what a pardon is. A pardon is when... You know, like a president, he has the executive authority to pardon certain people from prison, from prison sentences. Um, and generally, they're like, um, they're not really harsh crimes. Like, I don't think, you know, a president would like pardon someone who murdered 17 people or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know for sure, but I, I know generally that well technically he can pardon anybody from any type of sentence really but you know the consensus is that you know if they if they did something really heinous more than likely no president would want to approve them to get out you know what i mean 
that's what I'm thinking unless it's a family member or something like that but you know this lady and I read up on Desiree Perez a little bit not much but she had got caught uh, originally back in 1994 like they said for this drug possession she was in possession of about 30 some odd kilos <laughs> Yes, she was in possession of 30 kilo packs, okay? So like she was really moving some weight, as they say. She was also really, really um, instrumental in dealing with some Colombians, okay? And uh, worked as an informant for the FBI to build a case around these Colombian drug lords. So, I mean, if you're listening to this, this sounds like a scene from a movie or a scene from an episode of CSI Miami or, you know, the script of the next Bad Boys 3 or 4. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, she was really in that life. You know what I'm saying? She was really a part of that life. And um, this is what that 1994 charge was about. She had 30 kilos. She was in possession of 30 kilos of cocaine. So she she was really in the life. So, uh, like I said, long story short, she did her time. She was out, been out 10, 20 years, finding her way, doing whatever. Somehow, you know, I believe she's a native new yorker she's from new york so you know i'm sure she obviously she knows a lot of people somehow she ended up in the circles of jay-z they were friends at some point i'm assuming you know you don't just make anybody your ceo but you know apparently they become acquainted he liked her she must be i guess savvy smart and she becomes the CEO of Rock Nation in 2019. Says it right here in plain ink. So, uh, yeah, she's the CEO. Now, you know, this woman has a long rap sheet, I hear. You know what I'm saying? Before she got straight and start flying right, she had a long rap sheet. As I stated, she was really about that life, right? So she's out living her life. She hooks up with Jay-Z. They hit it off. They become friends. They become cool. He realizes that she's smart, savvy. He, you know, all that stuff happened with Rockefeller Records. It fell apart. He decided to um, get his own thing, called it Rock Nation. Boom. He names her the CEO in 2019. Now, sometime, like I said, sometime between... 1998 and 2000 i guess 2018 or maybe all the way up to 2019 right you know when she got labeled the ceo of rock nation she was in some other type of legal trouble give or take in that time span that she had got herself involved in and at some point, it was going to come to pass. It was going to come to a head. And apparently, it wasn't looking good for her. So she met with Meek Mill, or maybe, maybe, just maybe, the whole meeting was for her in the first place. She just used Meek Mill as a scapegoat. You know what I mean? Because she knew it was going to be televised. Anybody... Anybody know, everybody knows anything that um, Kim Kardashian is doing publicly, going out, meeting with people, you know, this lady can go to the gas station and have a, a hundred thousand, you know, photograph, you know, what do they call them? Paparazzis looking at her just pumping gas or whatever. So, you know, if she goes out just to meet someone for lunch is going to be all kinds of paparazzi and cameras taken so it would have looked strange uh i guess in her opinion for her to just meet with her by herself or maybe she felt that kim wouldn't meet with her by herself you know what i mean so i'm thinking she used meek mill as a scapegoat he was just there as a third party she really wanted to speak with kim directly to talk to her about getting assistance with getting her pardoned from whatever legal troubles that she was involved in. And like I said, for 
her to be pardoned, that meant that she already had some type of case brewing or because, you know, if you got money and you got a good enough lawyer, you can keep putting off going to jail. You know what I mean? I don't know what it's called. You know, if someone who knows about law and stuff like that, they, they, they can share that in the comments below. But, you know, you can keep putting off a court case and keep putting it off, keep putting it off, keep putting it off. Because whenever she actually had to go to court, you know, if, if whenever she had to actually go to court, if she wasn't able to keep putting it off like she had been, she was actually going to be convicted of whatever it was. So, you know, the case had already been drawn up and, and, and it was looking bad for her. But like I said, because she has money, apparently she has probably really good lawyers. She was able to keep putting it off. But she wanted help from Kim Kardashian to get her expunged or not really expunged, but to get her pardoned from this criminal case but the thing is still confusing to me is that pardon means that you are released from jail she wasn't in she wasn't in jail so that's the weird part to me that 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 I don't get I don't understand so like I said if anyone out there that's listening that that knows about this type of stuff that knows about commuted and, and being pardoned and all that stuff and what exactly it entails um please drop a comment because I'm just interested in this I'm really really interested in this I really would like to know because this is weird to me okay so fast forward from that right <laughs> this is my other theory because obviously you guys can see that I've like been working overtime on my thoughts with this but fast forward from that you know and again a lot of people are not really listening to what's going on with Kim Kardashian and, 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 and Kanye West because they're like whatever but I don't know if you guys have heard but lately the last few weeks it's been um reported all over social media tmz extra entertainment tonight all these type of social media shows um that talks about celebrities that kim and kanye are on the rocks right on the rocks um having marital problems marital issues and you say well they always do okay yeah they do but that's generally when kanye is going through one of his mental issues one of his mental breakdowns he's already said that he has um that he's bipolar um so you know naturally if he's not taking his medication um yeah he's he's going to be a little manic and basically they become all over the place now quite frankly i believe that he he may have um he may be bi bipolar but i also believe he's a little schizophrenic as well only because I've had some family members in my family that um, have been labeled schizophrenic. And basically when you are schizophrenic, you just start your mind, your brain just starts working over time. Like it's all over the place. Like you, you begin to, you know, think everybody's looking at you and, and, and following you. You begin to think people are trying to kill you and you know it could be your neighbor it could be a mother a father you know it could be your own child you know they could have a kid and, and they'll think that that kid is trying to kill them you know what i mean it's a really 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 weird and it's really really frightening because you basically you don't know what to do with these people when they're tripping like this um and they begin to like want to leave and run away because you know they they feel like they're being plotted to be killed <laughs> so i mean and it's not funny but um yeah it's really really uh it's really a trip but i i feel like he has that a little bit but he may not but he did publicly state that he does have bipolar but um the problem comes in when he doesn't take the medication and um kanye has stated that he doesn't like to take the medication because it it um it hinders his growth you know he's a really really talented talented guy you know we can't take that away from him and he's really really creative and when he takes that medication it tends to um dampen his creativity like he he, he almost feels numb 
You know what I mean? So he, he can't be creative and, and think of creative things for his next move, his next project, his next music project, or whatever it is that he wants to do or thinks of doing. It, it, it weakens that. It, dam it dampens that. The medication does. So therefore, he doesn't really like to take the medication. Um, I always use the analogy of uh, like when a kid is considered or diagnosed with... Um, being hyper um you know a kid is really hyper and they're jumping around all the time and they're screaming and, and yelling and hollering and playing around and jumping and jumping off the furniture and just running all around the house um and then the doctor diagnosed that kid with having um it's just just being hyper and they prescribe ritalin Ritalin is a medication to help um, just mellow the kid out, you know, to keep them from being so hyper. And if you've ever seen a kid on Ritalin, that's how Kanye says it makes him feel. Like, um, I've seen kids that have taken Ritalin, you know, prescribed to them by their doctor. And it's is like it stops them in their tracks like literally a kid could be jumping up and down running playing yelling screaming having fun and once that mother gives them that teaspoon or half a teaspoon whatever it is um of the ritalin or it may even come in a pill form as well once they take that ritalin it literally stops them in their tracks it's like if they were getting ready to jump up or jump off the couch or something they'll fall right to the floor as if it's, it's almost like they're a bag of um, a sack of potatoes. They just drop right to the floor. All the energy, all the life taken out of them instantly. It's really, really weird to see. It really is. And they just begin to just lay around. It's almost like they're comatose. You know, they're not asleep necessarily, but they're just laying around almost like they're beat down tired. That's what the Ritalin does. And so that's what Kanye basically says the medication does to him. It just, it dampens him. And, you know, obviously if he's a creative person like he is, he doesn't want his ideas and, you know, his train of thoughts to be dampen in that way so he doesn't like to take it so you know but yet it causes so many problems when he doesn't because he's just off the chain right he's off the hook so this is what causes the problem between um kim and kanye because she's like you're going around talking crazy and doing all these interviews and saying all this crazy stuff and the backlash and yada 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 right but you know you haven't heard him having any manic breakdowns or any mental issues lately you know what i mean you haven't heard that he's been pretty quiet in terms of um just going around tripping you haven't heard that so what's making kanye want to divorce because you know it's been said and it's been proven even by tmz that kanye is the one that suggested this divorce and that um you know, suggested uh, to get paperwork started for a divorce. Now, mind you, uh, it's not final or anything like that. It may even just be talk still right now. But Kanye is the one that has suggested divorce, okay? Not Kim. So I'm thinking that Kanye ended up obviously getting win at some point that kim met with meek mill and this desiree perez lady which we all know that kanye is at odds with jay-z he's not a fond of he's not fond of jay-z he doesn't like jay-z he feels like he's been wronged by jay-z he feels that jay-z played him he feels that jay-z is not a friend or a brother like he once thought so at this point, you know, he may be cordial if he ever comes across Jay-Z, um, you know, in the public, any type of social event or whatever. He'll be cordial, but, you know, for the most part, he's not rocking with Jay-Z at all. He basically considers Jay-Z the op at this point, right? And he definitely doesn't want his wife, you know, to be doing anything 
beneficial for Jay-Z or anybody that's working with Jay-Z. Because it's just, it's like you don't do that. Like, he's the ops. We're not rocking with them. You know, he didn't come to my wedding. And he also feels like you, he played him when um, Jay-Z kind of just text him and said, you know, hey, I was just texting you, checking on you and your wife, make sure she's okay. When um, Kim got uh, held up back in Paris that time and got her all her diamonds and everything stolen from her, you know, they pretty much thought that that was just uh, for publicity for their show. They never believed that Kim was actually held um you know, at gunpoint like that. And, you know, Kanye took offense to that because he figured if we're really friends and we're really like brothers, you would have actually called me, you know, in a situation like this where my wife was actually robbed at gunpoint and could have died. Like, you gonna just text me that? You know what I mean? So he was really, really offended and it let him know he saw Jay-Z's true colors and how he really felt about him. And, you know, obviously he felt like we're not really friends or or you don't really give a damn about me or my wife like i thought and um not to mention their issues with the whole um kanye being a part of title at one point and the money that jay-z says that uh kanye still owes and all this stuff right it's just unresolved issues that probably will never get resolved which is why He would be furious, Kanye would be furious if he found out that Kim was doing anything with Jay. Now, she's not doing anything with Jay directly, but this lady works for Jay. She's the CEO of Rock Nation. And, you know, by association, as far as he's concerned, that's a part of Jay. And, and, And I don't appreciate you doing anything like that, especially behind my back. And then you went and got this lady off. You worked to get this lady pardoned, really? And we know that apparently she didn't tell him ahead of time because if she had told him ahead of time, he probably would have talked her out of doing it in the first place. So by her name being on this list, now he sees that Kim probably held that information back from him. And now he sees that she really help this woman get pardoned and didn't let him know and he's furious he's pissed so now he's going around saying to himself like i can't trust her you know she's she's the enemy now possibly you know me like you're helping and, and working with somebody that don't even like me that don't even care about me or you why would you do that you know so um this is just my theory you know what i'm saying my brain could just be working overtime on this you know obviously i'll never know the truth but um i mean if anybody has any feedback any comments um they want to tell me about this whole pardon thing and what that's all about please comment below i'm really interested in knowing and and knowing what you guys think i mean do you guys think this is weird like do you are you filling me with my theory and what and what i think is going on like do you agree or or what because this this is this is a trip to me it's a trip like more so than not like why is she pardoned like she was out of jail like why would she be pardoned and all of a sudden kanye is tripping and wants a divorce from kim what is that all about and you know normally they'll say oh such and such and such and such is getting divorced in reconcilable differences or one the one or the other was cheating or one or the other was seen out on a date or kissing somebody you haven't heard any of that stuff as it relates to kim and kanye's divorce it's just saying trouble in paradise or not necessarily trouble in paradise, but just trouble in the marriage. I um, also heard that they may be in counseling or they were in counseling. So yeah, this is this is this is crazy to me. Somebody please just comment and, and let me know what, what do you guys think or you know give me the um, information about um, the whole commuted being pardoned thing and what that's all about. I'm gonna get out of here because this video is at 44 minutes and I hate it when they go long, but. Um, Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my crazy theory. You know what I mean? Is it a crazy theory? I don't know. But um, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.